We know the Israeli government held their daily briefing this morning, giving us updated information on the war, the possibility of a ceasefire, and of course, as they continue to warn those in the area to evacuate. Let's listen in now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Israeli government spokesman Elon Levy. This is day 62 of the October 7th war. First, a brief update, and then we will take your questions. Uh, let's start with an update on the latest figures. Since the start of the October 7th massacre, Hamas has fired more than 11,500 rockets at Israel, including a large barrage at the city of Beersheba yesterday. More than 2,000 of those rockets have misfired, the large majority of which have landed inside the Gaza Strip, causing untold damage to the residents of Gaza. Total injuries requiring evacuation to hospitals in Israel since the start of the massacre, 10,223. The IDF has notified the families of the deaths of 414 soldiers, including those who have fallen in on-the-ground fighting against Hamas in Gaza. IDF fatalities have risen by four since yesterday's update, with the confirmed deaths of Major General Reserves Adi Shani, Sergeant Amit Bunsel, Sergeant Almanau Emmanuel Falka, and Major General Reserves uh, Maol Gershoni, funerals are ongoing. The number of hostages held by Hamas in Gaza remains 138. That includes 118 males and 20 females, 127 Israeli citizens and 11 foreign nationals, two children among the total hostages, the two Bibas children, and 10 people over the age of 75. And that is in addition to the four hostages Hamas has been holding predating the October 7th massacre. The family of Hannah Katsia, who was released from Gaza on the first day of the hostage release pause, reports via the media that she is now in serious condition after her health deteriorated while she was being held in Gaza and further upon her release. She had no heart problems when she was abducted. Now she has severe heart problems due to the harsh conditions and starvation in the Hamas terror dungeons. Every minute now is critical as we ramp up military pressure on Hamas to get all of the hostages back. Today's operational update, I want to begin with an issue of grave concern. As Israel eliminates Hamas terror infrastructure embedded in civilian areas, Hamas has shifted to launching attacks on the Israeli people from within the designated humanitarian zone. At 12.52 and 2.12 yesterday, Hamas launched missile attacks from inside the Al Muwasi humanitarian zone, with one missile falling short and falling inside Gaza. Then, at 3.59 local time, Hamas terrorists launched 12 missiles towards the Israeli city of Beersheba from inside the Al Mawasi humanitarian zone, launching those missiles from near the tents of evacuated Gazan civilians and from right next to United Nations facilities, as you can see in the aerial images that the army has supplied. Hamas is doubling down on its human shield strategy in flagrant violation of international law and every norm of human decency. Israel designated the Al Mawasi area as a humanitarian zone because Hamas has not embedded itself there under homes and schools and hospitals, and that is why Hamas is cynically abusing the humanitarian zone in order to continue attacking the people of Israel and then try to hide behind their own people and evade justice. We are demanding clear and unequivocal condemnations from the whole of the international community of Hamas's abuse of humanitarian zones in addition to its abuse of protected humanitarian facilities. And we expect international agencies on the ground while condemning Hamas to continue facilitating the provision of the humanitarian aid to that zone instead of directing civilians towards areas where Hamas is trying to use them as human shields.
The IDF continues combat, close quarter combat against Hamas terrorists in the Gaza Strip, including in Khan Yunis, eliminating tunnel shafts and the terrorists operating within them. Our commando forces are conducting raids in Khan Yunis and battling Hamas terrorists with forces striking targets using precise real-time intelligence. In the north, we have also seen intense fighting between IDF forces and Hamas forces in Jabalia and Shajaiya, which have been completely encircled. We have broken through their defensive lines, and those terrorists are now emerging from their underground tunnels to engage our men in close combat. Last night, our forces surrounded terror mastermind Yihya Sinhua's house, a powerful reminder that nowhere is safe for the October 7th monsters. Wherever he is hiding, we will find him and we will bring him to justice. An update on the humanitarian front. Israel is redoubling efforts to secure Red Cross access to the 138 hostages Hamas is still holding in violation of humanitarian law. The Prime Minister has spoken with the President of the Red Cross and urged her to appeal to Qatar to exercise its leverage over Hamas. The, ho the hostages must be given medical attention by the International Red Cross, especially the elderly abducted without their medications and those who suffered life-threatening injuries during the October 7th massacre. As gruesome testimonies continue to emerge from within the Hamas terror dungeons, we know that every minute is critical and every minute the Red Cross does not visit those hostages is a clear and immediate threat to their lives. Last night, the Security Cabinet approved the recommendation of the War Cabinet to allow the supplement of fuel necessary to prevent a humanitarian collapse and the outbreak of epidemics into the southern Gaza Strip. The War Cabinet will determine the exact quantities in accordance with the situation. We adhere to our guiding principle that humanitarian aid must reach the civilians who need it and only the civilians who need it. An update from the Northern Front. In the last 24 hours, launches continue to be fired at Israel from Lebanon, including at Arab al-Aramsha and Mount Hermon. The IAF has been striking Hezbollah terror targets in Lebanon and the sources of fire. Among the targets struck have been terrorist infrastructure, launch posts, military posts and military sites belonging to the Hezbollah terror organization. The State of Israel will hold Lebanon responsible for everything that happens on our northern border. Hezbollah is acting at the guidance and encouragement of its puppet masters in Iran. We will continue to thwart and respond to all acts of aggression. And if Hezbollah chooses to drag Israel into a full-scale war, one we are doing everything to try to avoid, Lebanon will find itself set back years. Another update from the south. Yesterday, a surface-to-surface -surface missile was fired at Israel over the Red Sea and was successfully intercepted in the Red Sea area by the Arrow Aerial Defense System without any damage to the city of Eilat. A comment now on UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres's Kafkaesque step to invoke Article 99 of the UN Charter. The Hamas October 7th massacre was a threat to international peace and security. Calls for a permanent ceasefire that would leave our hostages in Gaza and the Hamas terror regime in power are also a threat to international peace and security. Israel's efforts to dismantle the Hamas terror organization in response to the October 7th massacre are designed to uphold and restore international peace and security. The United Nations should have responded to the October 7th massacre on October 8th by demanding that Hamas immediately surrender, hand over its war criminals for a tribunal, and release the hostages immediately. In the absence of that, the Israeli people are now exercising their natural and inalienable right of self-defense against Hamas's crimes against humanity, and we are doing more to uphold the international rules-based order than those who are trying to use their diplomatic clout to secure Hamas's survival, free and emboldened to perpetrate another October 7th massacre as it has consistently been threatening to do since that dark day when it brutally murdered 1,200 of our people. That's it for today's update. We'll now take your questions. Anyone in the room and then uh, anyone over the Zoom? Yes, Melanie. Uh, 
Um, Melanie, from AP, last night the War Cabinet said they would increase the amount of fuel and cooking fuel into Gaza. I was curious if there's any numbers um, on what that will increase to. The exact quantities will be determined by the War Cabinet in accordance with the situation. Uh, the Security Cabinet has decided to take this step in order to prevent a humanitarian collapse and the outbreak of epidemics inside the Gaza Strip. That is, of course, uh, something that we are very keen to avoid, both for the sake of civilians in Gaza and also the region uh, more broadly. And so that is why the Security Cabinet has approved that, uh, that step. Uh, and we continue to reaffirm that our basic principle is that humanitarian aid must reach the civilians who need it and that Hamas must not steal it. Question from Joel Pollock from Breitbart News. If the UN Security Council approves a ceasefire resolution, what will be Israel's response? And can you please repeat the number of rockets fired from the humanitarian zone? I'm not going to address hypothetical scenarios, but Israel's aims in this war that Hamas declared on October 7th remain consistent and unchanging. This war will end with the end of Hamas. The people of Israel have decided we can no longer live next to an army of terror, using Gaza as a territorial base from which to conduct acts of genocide against the Jewish people and the brutal atrocities that we saw on uh, October 7th, we reaffirm that any calls for a permanent ceasefire that would leave our hostages in Gaza and the Hamas terror regime in power represent a threat to international peace and security. And by bringing down the Hamas terror regime, by restoring security for the people of Israel, by creating new opportunities for Palestinians who realize that terror is a dead end, Israel is working to advance international peace and security. And we will continue doing that until we get all of the hostages home and end Hamas's reign of terror in the Gaza Strip. Question from Annabelle Timsit from the Washington Post. What is the Israeli government's response to the findings published today by several news organizations and human rights groups that Israel was responsible for the strikes that killed and injured journalists from Reuters, AFP and Al Jazeera in Lebanon on October 13th? What can you tell us beyond what Lieutenant Colonel Richard Hecht told Reuters, which is we don't target journalists? Has Israel investigated this incident and what has been found out? I'm not familiar with these specific reports, but of course the guiding principle of Israel's campaign against Hamas is that we uphold the principles of international law regarding proportionality, necessity, distinction. We target Hamas, we do not target civilians, and we've been doing everything possible to get civilians out of harm's way while we go after the terror monsters who perpetrated the October 7th massacre. Jim Williams, uh, Zenger International News Service, Washington, D.C. Why is Israel being criticized for not following all the rules of war while, Ham while Hamas has yet to follow any rules of war? Jim, you ask a very good question. Uh, Israel continues to uphold the principles of international law in this fight against Hamas. Even though the enemy doesn't respect, recognize international law, not only humanitarian law, but any basic principles of humanity, Hamas is rampant crimes against humanity, disguising its own fighters as civilians, hiding within civilian areas, storing weapons uh, within civilian areas, tunnels underneath little children's beds, represent a serious challenge in fighting this war in accordance with the principles of international law, but that is something we are determined to continue doing. And as for people who choose to distort the facts and uh, criticize Israel unfairly in an attempt to delegitimize our exercise of right of self-defense, because they want to leave the Hamas terror regime standing or for any other reason, that would be a question for them to answer, not for us. Uh, final question from Joel Pollock. Can you please repeat the numbers of rockets from uh, Al Masawi? Uh, Joel, I'll refer you to the statement released by the IDF yesterday. You can find that on their website and uh, Telegram channels. The information I have in front of me uh, right now is that we're talking about uh, at least one rocket that was fired at 12.52 yesterday. At 14.12, uh, I believe there were three rockets, but double-check that against the IDF statement. And then at 3.59 local time, there were 12 missiles that were launched from the Gaza Strip towards the Beersheba area. All of those, as we said, from inside the Al-Mawasi humanitarian zone, right next to tents of evacuated Gazan civilians, right next to UN facilities. And I'll take this question to restate that we demand clear and unequivocal condemnations from the international community. Israel is doing everything in our power to get civilians out of harm's way, and it is outrageous that Hamas is exploiting those humanitarian 
humanitarian efforts to double down on its human shield strategy without clear condemnations. So far, we hope that will change, without clear condemnations from the international agencies that are supposed to be concerned for the welfare of civilians in Gaza. Uh, last question from David Isaac from JNS. Has Israel already, or will it, target those Hamas rocket launchers from within the humanitarian zones? Uh, the IDF will continue to attack Hamas wherever it attacks our people from. There will be no immunity for Hamas uh, simply because it chooses to hide behind civilian areas. That's why we've been encouraging civilians to evacuate uh, to areas where Hamas has not cynically embedded itself. And we call on the international community again to firmly condemn and put pressure on Hamas and its supporters to end this exploitation of uh, designated humanitarian areas and protected humanitarian zones. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we will update about the timing of the briefing tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. Keep safe and um, happy Hanukkah. Thank you.